All right, motherfucker. I now know that your story don't match the thing that I said. So I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get on. I'm gonna get to you. But first, as a power move, I'm gonna karaoke in your face. First, I gotta maximize that drama stat, though. Maximize the drama stat. Yeah, tank top. Oh, I hate it. I'm not wearing that. Some things aren't worth more drama points. Yes! Two more drama. Mm. Yes. Yes. Gotta make sure that nothing has minus drama on it. Oh. I am the drama boy. Yes. Here we are. It's time for my great awakening, my perfect day, my magical performance. I have nine drama, which is the highest that ever, mostly because of items. We can do this. I believe in us. The stage is all set for your performance. Feels silent. You can hear the pellets creak under your feet. You feel a little dizzy, a little unsteady suddenly. I'm annoyed by this- these minuses. Look around the room first. The bar is full and buzzing with chatter. No one's paying you any attention, but still, you feel your knees turn to noodles. Okay, now a couple is looking at you, even worse. Just... Just make sure you move, okay? Don't be stiff. Did I get worse? Oh, throw in some dance moves, bonus points, thanks, savoir fire. I'm ready, Gart. Hit play. <gasps> the air is thick with anticipation. Someone dims the lights as the music starts. Okay, here we go. I would often go there To the tiny church there The smallest church in San San Though it once was larger How the real may rest there Down through the mist there Toward the Seven Sisters Toward those pile cliffs there I would often stay there In a tiny yard there So glad here Looking forward to the past here But now You are all alone None of this matters Now None of this matters at all. Well, that worked one way or another. So I guess it's the canon then. The reptile voice, the reptile brain, the first voice we heard all game, is actually what his voice sounds like. I, I wasn't entirely clear on that, if that was just supposed to be my reptile brain, or if that's actually my character's voice. God damn. That is a difficult voice. I would often go there, to the tiny church there. The smallest church in St. Cyan's. Though it once was larger. How the real... May rest there, down through the mist there, 
toward the Seven Sisters, toward those pale cliffs there. I would often stay there, in their tiny yard there. I have been so glad here, looking forward to the past here. But now you are alone. None of this matters at all. Hmm. Lots, lots of here and there rhyming. Kind of a song kind of feels a little iffy. We did it. A lazy applause fills the room. You feel your hands shake as you as awareness of your body returns to you. Thank you, ancient reptilian brain. There's silence now in the deep where the voice came from. It has receded to return only in dreams and nightmares. This guy really carried you. I want to dedicate the song to whoever the, f the fuck wrote me that fucking letter. I still love you, you fucking asshole. My partner. Gart. It's all shit, Gart. <laughs> dedicate to the pale. Nothing that will devour the world. And I performed it for myself. This is all for you, Kim. The lieutenant doesn't say anything, but gives you a quick smile before turning away. He's incapable of blushing, but if he weren't, he'd blush. Good, good. The cafeteria manager intervenes to cut the moment short. Are we ready? I want to unplug the microphone now. Last words? You can flip out those finger pistols, or you can be like... Or you can unionize. <laughs> whip out your finger pistols, shoot the air, and leave. Oh, he didn't animate it. No one cared. <laughs> the smallest church in San right? The cafeteria manager is waiting for you... ...to acknowledge that he recognized the song. I fucking rocked that shit. It was alright. He doesn't sound like he thinks you rocked it. Subdued. I might start letting people up there again. Now, what can you- what can- what can do for you? <laughs> there we go. So I guess I, I've redeemed the karaoke stage for him. If I had done poorly enough. He might have condemned it for good, but now he might let people sing again, because I'm just so great. And it looks like, yeah, Titus came out to, to watch, which is interesting. I've got no Titus. The clowns are still hanging around. What is it now? Wait, do I want to switch my gear out? Eh. I've already done my authority gambit. I guess I'm wearing the boots regardless. <clears throat> Clashe says she wasn't raped. Fuck. The big man's eyes and veins bulge. I knew that fucking whore couldn't be trusted. For the record, she steps in forcefully. Titus Hardy did not explicitly refer to the victim as a whore, nor did he say anything about trusting her. Oh, shut up and stay out of this, Liz. He turns back to you. He raped her. He was out of his fucking mind. You have no idea. She's just in denial, asshole. You don't understand the traumatic experience. She's shutting down, and she doesn't fucking trust you. Yeah, she's crazy, you know. The rat-faced man says carefully, A crazy bitch. You know the type. She's fucked up. 
This is a diversion. Stay on track. Cut the bullshit. She told me the truth. La man. He says through clenched teeth. I am at the end of my goddamn rope with you. I fucking told you not to push her. And you went and pushed her. Something breaks in him. He takes a step closer and says, I am going to fucking hit you, duck. Titus Hardy. Her voice rings out through the room like a warning shot. Everett personally sent me to take care of this. If this goes south, we'll all be in the shit. But you, Titus Hardy, are going to be buried. Am I understood? When she's angry, she emphasizes the S's. It gives her voice a strangely hypnotic quality. Her lips barely move as she speaks. Look, Copper. The tattooed man snaps his fingers to get your attention. We know the dead fuck was a rapist and a killer. We got him confessing to it on a tape. Show it to him, T. He shows you. He turns to Titus, who's still breathing heavily. What's the harm, right? Here, jerkwad. He slams an audio tape on the table. Listen to this shit, then come back and tell me the soldier of apocalypse was an innocent man. Why should I care about the tape? You lied to me. You don't care about evidence? His eye twitches. The fuck are, the fuck are you a cop for then? Pigs, T. They don't care about getting the truth. They care about getting convictions. They're fucking keeping score on the bulletin boards. I won't be on your bulletin board. If you don't listen to the tape, you got nothing to talk about. There's a lot of questions. If you ask them now, they'll keep bringing up the tape. Listen to it, and they'll have nothing left to hide. So what's on the tape? What's on it? We call it the Door Gunner Mega Mix. You know why, once you listen to it. Now that is intriguing. You had me a door gunner. Where'd you get this tape? You think we got into this shit deaf and dumb? You RCM aren't the only ones who know how to bug people. There's no university degree for that. Actually, there are a few. Crypto analyst, radio officer. Actually, there are numerous degrees that you can get in signals intelligence. Yeah, like you have one, smartass? He looks to the left. There's a beer there. There's a beer there he forgot. So you bugged him. How? We have machines. He nods. We're in logistics. How do you think a harbor works? It's advanced stuff. Understood. You listened in on their, on, our, on their communications. So it's exactly what she thought would happen. They are listening to the wires. He takes a little note. How long? Since way before their chief started taking swing lessons. Things got nice and quiet after that. Which one of you is doing this advanced radio work then? It's not advanced. The heavy man wheezes. You just hold up in a coop all day writing down what they say. It gets hot as hell in there. Don't put yourself down Angus. It's important work. The chief picks up his beer to offer a silent toast. Yeah, man. You're like a radio genius or something. Those notes are some some in-depth stuff. Indexes and shit. Where can I listen to this? I'm sure we can find a tape player. The lieutenant whispers. Where can I listen to this? He mocks you. Why don't you try shoving up your ass, genius? Yeah, play it with your ass, cocksucker. His voice echoes like thunder in the small room. I'm sure we can find a tape player. That's not a problem. He repeats calmly in a hushed voice. Keeps repeating himself. Your room had one. Or maybe it's too broken. That's enough for now. I'll get back to the investigation. Don't forget your tape, lawman. He pushes his little tape forward with his giant hand. Compliments of Titus Hardy. Fine, I'll listen to it. You do that, he says, 
adjusting his belt buckle. Oh, and keep it. Maybe you'll need a reminder of human ugliness someday. Hmm. <clears throat> to listen to the tape. Well, I have a boombox. If I'm so sure she's openly manipulating me, maybe the confession is something that I can play in front of her. See what she thinks of that. It's cruel if she's a victim, but she, even she's claiming not to be. This might shake up some of the cobwebs of why she's lying to me, if she is. If the game even acknowledges that I'm playing in front of her, which I don't know if it will. I don't know, this might be kind of rough. The Door Gunner Mega Mix, a magnetic tape acquired from Titus Hardy. It supposedly holds a recording of the Mercenary Task Force radio communications recorded via a de-encryption station. Not a good omen. Requires a boombox to play. The port of reels just what you needed. The reels attach to the apparatus with a satisfying click. The tape is routed behind the magnetic reader. Play it. Ah. You push commencer and the tape starts spinning. Violent static and machine sounds fill the air. This isn't Reva Show, the man's voice says. This is a fucking village. I can almost see the elephants. Another loud screech, some kind of machinery. The harbor. Kim takes out his notebook. That's the sound of a Vasen crane. The same crane we saw before. He's right. We've heard that sound before, when we moved the crane around. More static. When this shit's done, I'm gonna tear that place up. Soldier of the apocalypse style. Kill shit. Dogs and chickens, too. Gonna rent a room. Cordy. Real nice one. This part's unintelligible. I don't give a shit, I'm fucking done. I'm done mentally. I'll fucking do them all in. Rape that disco cunt on the counter. You know, the dancer whore upstairs. Do it Lee Schmin style. Never did get that taste out of my mouth. A click, then silence. The rest of the tape is empty. The lieutenant presses the button marked Aretea on your porter wheel. The tape stops spinning. What was that at the very end? Silence? End of recording. What do you think? It seems authentic enough. Probably recorded off the shortwave, then edited to seem more incriminating. He sounded like he was on patrol around the harbor walls. He's just letting off steam. I agree. He also sounded inebriated. Still, the lieutenant looks at the tape. You are familiar with this look now. It's one of- it's his look of suspicion. Who's this Cordy? One of the other mercenaries, I think. The one he was talking to. A friend of his? What's Leishmin? A village on the Samaran Isola. In TNN. Grad committed war crimes there. The kind of thing he talks about. The TNN conflict is an ongoing proxy war between Grad and Safra. It has been hot for 12 years with the atrocities piling on, mostly committed by the Grad. You think he was there? Who knows? Maybe the tattoos would have an answer. Or maybe Li Shmin is just murk talk for atrocity. Slaughter. A symbol of Soldier of Apocalypse style conduct in a civil environment. <clears throat> okay, then what now? I think we've got a few more questions for Clashe, don't you? He looks around. This seems to contradict her testimony, at least to some degree. 
As you take out the tape, the boombox tunes itself back to the cheery radio again, spewing out beats like it's a Friday night. That's just what defaults to doing. Hmm. Alright, questions. Yeah, I don't think playing it around here was necessarily relevant, but maybe, I guess... I was just thinking what a nice evening it is for taking part in a murder investigation. Either way, we can follow up on it. Titus Hardy gave us a recording where the deceased states his intention to commit rape. She puts her coffee cup down. With a soft ring, as the porcelain meets the metal table. Did he? A smile flits across her face. I never said he was a good man, or that he had good intentions, only that he was never bad to me. She doesn't care. If anything, she sounds amused. On this tape, he specifically identifies you as the target. Hmm. Where did they get this recording exactly? It's intercepted radio chatter of the deceased, recorded via a de-encryption station. It's authentic enough. She arches her brow. Does he say he's going to do it Soldier of the Apocalypse style? Those are the exact words he used. Yeah, that was practically his pickup line. He picks up, She picks the cup back up. Did he say whores a lot? Was he pretty much on the verge of doing it Leishman style? Leishman was mentioned. He wasn't exactly... He wasn't actually there. He didn't do a tour, or at least didn't tell me he did. Would have been overkill anyway. He lived his own little leash men. It was his it was in his everything. Do you think he was trying to scare people? No. I'm pretty sure he did all those things and then had to internalize them to keep on living, until they just sort of turn into his... She thinks. What's the word I'm looking for? Persona? Running joke. I was gonna say running joke. And it sounds like you didn't even get the good bits. Laylee's punchlines got way, way funkier than that. He was like the Semenes Conflict, the Leishman Massacre, and the 36 Famine and Yisit all rolled up into one person, then cast in Orange's ceramic armor, which he wore in bed and in the shower. And you spent time with this person romantically? We're all scraping up any happiness we can find, officer going around with our little scouring sticks. You, your first love, Mr. Lee Schmin here. Did he tell you he actually he's actually done any of those things? He had matinees, I mean. No, we were too busy laying waste to our own nervous systems to direct any of the fury outward. He seemed, she thinks, he seemed happy, I guess. At ease. As much as a man like him could be. Thank you for, for clearing that up, miss. He turns to you. Whenever you're ready, I'm interested to hear what Titus Hardy has to say now. She takes a small sip of her coffee and smiles. Now that you've had some time, could you tell us more about the victim? Like, for example, his name. Actually, officer, I didn't know his name. I just call him Lely. A nickname? I guess. He came from Lelystad. It's short for that. And it was his army name, apparently. He said his real name wasn't his. I tried to pry it out of him, but it was no use. Lelystad. That's a good start. The lieutenant writes it down in his notebook. Then tears out a page and hands it to you. We have a few questions you can help us with. A few things a field autopsy alone couldn't, couldn't can't answer. The young woman cranes her neck, 
trying to catch a glimpse of the page the lieutenant passed to you. On it is a list of autopsy observations recorded neatly in blue ink. Where is Layla Stead? The place, I mean. In Orange, officer. It's a, I think, municipality is the term. A nowhere town there. The Lelystad municipality has few boroughs and even fewer cities. It's made of agricultural plots near the border of Gotwald. Executive summary, cows, silos, and wheat. <clears throat> you were almost right, officer. The lieutenant shakes his head. Like you just missed a shot in the darts. That means his race was occidental, not mondial. I'll update the form. You were both from Orange? Yes. We were compatriots. Did that bring you together? No, he was too old for that. And from another part of Orange, I didn't even understand his accent. What brought us together wasn't Orange. It was bad habits. No love for Mother Orange. But wasn't he a soldier? This could be worth pursuing. A military man, but not a patriot. No. He left the National Service after they taught him to do what he did on Semenine. He wasn't the flag-waving kind. He was the making-money-killing-people kind. He was by no means a stupid man. She takes a long drag of her cigarette and washes it down with coffee. A people person. A small platoon leader. Certainly not a patriot. This is a, the longest lasting coffee mug I've ever seen, by the way. If she just keeps drinking from it. She might be lighting new cigarettes, but I don't know where she's getting more coffee. Oh, I know there's a pot of coffee right there, right? The one that looks like an animal or something? I don't remember. You don't seem like much of a patriot yourself. Hmm. She hums. There is nothing on, Mundi. The old, old world is dead, and we both knew it. Maybe Orange did bring us together in loathing. I love Rivashal, though. She looks around, the wind in her hair. I hope she loves me, too. How old was he, miss? He was forty-two. Forty-two, are you sure? I would have had him above fifty. He had many scars that made him appear older, but no. The memory the memory makes her smile. We even celebrated his birthday, like, some weeks ago. It was a funny two days. He had little reason to lie to me. Looks like you were right, officer. The lieutenant taps on his notebook once, as though assigning some kind of point. I guess his exact age. Hey! Points are good. Have one, you old dog, before we all die. Wow, endurance. That never comes up. Because it's a poopy stat full of poop. Hey, I'm about to level up again. <laughs> I didn't know this was a competition, Kim. It isn't. Police work is a cooperative sport. This is clearly sports for him. Some kind of... Something like archery. Or darts. It's still about getting hits right and not missing. That's too pinball for me. I just like to get autopsies right on the first try. He makes another note. Where were we? He's lying. <laughs> His eye color? Blue. Light blue. They were like... She stops. Her eyes half closed, then continues. Like little blue galaxies, you know? It was strange seeing those eyes in his fucked up face. Pardon the swearing. She takes a drag. I do him an injustice. He wasn't ugly. And he had a beautiful, soft voice. Very surprising. What with all the scarring. It was quite something watching him speak. He had a combat wound on his chin and mouth. Yes, severe. She seems to enjoy the word. 
It made him look like half his face was cracking away in some strange smile. That and those eyes. Oh, yes. The lieutenant suddenly remembers his hair, if you can remember. It was light brown, almost blonde. He darkened it with brilliantine, made it oily. Not nice to stroke. I couldn't convince him to leave it alone. He had a tattoo. What did it mean? Oh, she smiles. That. What did it represent? Do you know? It was a map of his life and the places he visited as a soldier. It was mostly for showing off to chicks, though. Showing off to chicks? How so? How? She leans back. Imagine him laying in bed, freakish, mu freakish musculature laid out on the sheets. Scarred, of course. Tattooed. The sheets are dirty for some reason. Is this orange she's lit? Is this orange she's lit? Yes. This is the very essence of orange she's lit. A moment's respite, dark and hopeless as the struggle itself. She leans even further back to demonstrate. He's smoking and drinking, of course, and his chest and shoulders and arms are studded with stars. Tens, hundreds of them, maybe even thousands. And the women... And the woman goes like... She's points in the air with her sharp-nailed finger, picking out an imaginary tattoo star. What was this, baby? And, and he says... She lowers her voice comically... That was too hardcore. Don't ask me about that. So she goes, Okay, but what's this, baby? And he's and he's like, Some bad shit there. Killed some loincloths. And so it goes. Star after star. Port after port. Third world country after third world country. And he's done horrible things in every single one of them. You were the woman in this? Oh, yeah. She nods. Can you tell us precisely what these mean? No, thank you. She does not take it. I've seen enough of him dead. I can tell you what they meant without looking at them. She pours herself some coffee. Go on. He was a blue-eyed boy with thick arms. From a small town. He was also poor. And the government of Oranxi needed some people killed, so they turned to him into a grotesque killer for money. He went to Killer Academy in Vredderfort, then he killed some people on the Seminine Islands, and on to other islands too, all the islands. After this, he came to Rivershall and got killed himself. Not a very fun story. It is when you're high. It can be very exciting then. You have the tools to deal with it. It's not a very nice story to remember when you're sober. She smiles faintly. A change of topic. We ordered a toxicology report. Any idea what that'll show us? A real rainbow splattering of pharmaceuticals, I bet. She grins. Barbiturates? Amphetamine? Sildenafil? How much does that toxicology report cost the police of Revachol? I can do it for half that. Save you some money. Make some myself. It's quite expensive, miss. But we'll manage without your help for now. I don't know, I got 18 bucks. <laughs> Could it be love that did him in? It very well could be, yes. What do you mean? What do I mean? She raises an eyebrow. I have no idea. I don't even know what you mean. Love did him in? What does that mean? He told me love did him in. That's not funny, officer. Her voice is like a slash through the air. 
Her shoulders tense up. There. She momentarily lost control over straight back guy. It appears that she feels guilty. Straight back guy. That's what Volition calls composure. My fucking personalities have nicknames for each other. <laughs> oh, this game is fucking absurd. Do you feel guilty? Of course I do. I'm hungover. I feel guilty about everything. Do you feel guilty about what happened to him? Among many other things, yes. I could have done something. There's always something you can do. Alright? She looks into her coffee. Ask me something else. What is this, an interrogation? You didn't tell her this was going to be an interrogation. Rhetoric is on her side. Cut it out, Rhetoric. I know you're all compromised. Volition told me, apparently. Unless Volition's compromised, but why would Volition be compromised in that direction, though? That's confusing. We were able to get information from straight from straight neck guy. This is a creepy ass fucking picture, by the way. With the hands sticking out all creepy like it's really unnerving. I mean rhetoric. It's like a head eating somebody else's head, basically. That even is what we're I don't know. I think we're finished with this line of questioning. Alright. The lieutenant puts the slip back in his notes and observes the young woman for a moment. Coolly, gracefully, she pours herself yet more coffee. We'll return to this later, miss. The motorway south. Oh. My existential crisis. The lone vector stretches in your mind's eye into the wild, pale yonder for an unimaginable distance, forgetting Forgetting. Until you can no longer remember anything. No cities, no mountains, no oceans. And finally, no vector. Nothing remains. A blank space with no point of reference, where only one type of motion is possible. The motion of a human throat, swallowing. And then it comes to you. To reach the end of the motorway south is to be unborn. You've had this thought before while aimlessly wandering the streets of Jamrock. A lost piece of the man you were. A dark hope. All int white checks unlocked. It's a lot of int checks. And plus one inland empire. A sw the swallowing motion. Hmm. That's always a bit lucky when that happens. Unlocking my int checks. Which checks even... What does that cover? Oh my god, so much has happened. And so much has finished, potentially. Dating all the way back. Including reporting the crime in the first place. Conceptualization. The backyard wall has been updated. Is that the only one? That might be the only one. I don't think I had that. I think I might have been a little unlucky. I didn't have a lot of int checks to unlock. Oh well. Luck of the draw with some of these. The victim tattoo. Ask some... Ask another about the tattoo's possible meaning. We should probably double check anything she says to us. She seems a little concerning. Ask the Patank player about about Maybells. The Patank player? Oh, right. The veteran downstairs. Oh. I probably just missed my chance to talk to him today. I walked right by him and I probably could have talked to him then. We're still... Clock's ticking away. He probably went to bed by now. And next, yep, Door Gunner Megamix takes us back down to Titus next. This just keeps happening. I have one point. There are passive things that happen, both when you're walking around the environment and when you're talking to people, so it makes sense to put points into stuff just in general. But strategically doing them to unlock stuff seems like it might be more valuable. Either, either resetting a white check manually by putting a point into the skill, or... Uh, the alternative is, uh, when I'm about to do a red check, I can access this menu. I've done it before now. I can access this menu and stack the deck in favor of my red check right there on the scene, right before I click on it, because this menu is accessible during that point. So st stacking points definitely makes sense. Wait, stop. 
That man, bloated beyond all recognition, was 42? That's what she said, yes. Below the damage, the weeks of decomposition, all that swollen indignity and, mora and mortality is 42 years, years old. Where is this going? How old are you? That's where this is going. 45 liters of raw alcohol has left its disfigurements. Is that 45,000 liters? It might be. Commas and periods are switched in Europe, usually, oftentimes. For how we denote currency or numbers. What lies beneath, you wonder? You could ask either one of them. Miss, how old do you think I am? Huh? She leans in closer. How old do I think you are? She is buying time to formulate the best answer. Look who's finally awake! <laughs> Volition's just fucking talking shit about all the other parts of my body now. I don't know. 40? I was like 9 when OO peaked. That was what, 19 years ago? I liked them when I was nine. You couldn't have liked it when you were 40. Let's say you were 20-something. 20 25. A good disco age. 25 plus 19 is 44. I'm gonna say you're 44. Wow. Yeah. I have a university degree, you know. She flicks ash from her cigarette. 44. I'm young. Absolutely. Age is just a number, man. Yes, miss, but the lieutenant disagrees. For him, that number is 56. Wait, this requires scientific measurements. Bring it on, I'm not afraid of the truth. Thought gained date of birth generator, uh oh. To the laboratorium. Oh god, I have a birth calculator in my brain now? It's gonna take a while. Then this one, all red checks fail, but only for four hours. I could just stay up late, once Kim is gone, and just do a bunch of red checks for a while. Or avoid red checks for a while, and read some cases or something. And then that'll help me get past that. The homosexual underground and the data birth generator are gonna take a while. I gotta pick what I wanna get rid of. Maybe the one I just did, actually, Motorway South? Plus one Inland Empire is not very exciting. All white checks unlocked only happens... I assume that only happens then, right? Not permanently? I guess I could just try a white check. And if I do the white check... No, there's no way it permanently unlocks all of them forever. Like, meaning they can never be locked. Because then you would just keep clicking them and it would be stupid. So it's just a momentary thing. All this did was give me one point of Inland Empire, so it's pretty... ...removable. Might want to talk to the, uh, lady on the boat about it first, though. Just because she might have dialogue about that, since she's the one that told me about that. Oh, I wanted to talk to the pale driver. Yeah, both of the people about that. Maybe? Ah, yeah, yeah. We'll figure it out. All I know is I better stay away from Kim's door. Because he's going to leave me in like 10 minutes. And I do not want him to leave for the day. But in like 10 minutes, everyone might leave for the day. Quickly, Kim. Before- yes. Whew. I think in 10 minutes is when people tend to turn in for the night, or was it 23 o'clock? I think he turns in at 21 o'clock regardless, so I'm probably gonna have this talk, and then I'm probably going to... ...go ahead and... ...send him to deal with the body. The clowns are still hanging around. What is it now? So I talked to Clashe about the tape. And? He tenses immediately. Chest tightens. Jaw sets. Ready for another blow. And nothing. She stands by what she said. That fucking fucker. He stares at his beer for two seconds intently, then turns to you. You're the worst cops in Revachal. I gave you gold on that tape. That fucker wasn't aimed at you. It was to her.
It was dark stuff, but it didn't prove anything, and it didn't change her mind. Dark? Dark is when you start a goddamn death rock band. He said he'd rape her. He shakes his head in disbelief. What did she have to say then? Fine by her? This is what people are supposed to be like? Fucking whoop de doo Actually, I think it made her a little nostalgic. Yes, in fact. The lieutenant looks at you, then him. I think she thought it was a little funny. Funny? Titus mumbles, his lips barely moving. No good goddamn psycho whore. All right. He slams his giant fist on the door frame. All fucking righty then. I guess it's good then that fucking... Please try to cool yourself in the presence of visitors, Titus. Her voice is a bit softer than earlier. Titus rubs his chin with his palm as if trying to grind it smooth. This is just perfect. Just fucking perfect. Any thoughts on this, Lawman? You don't have to say anything out loud. Just mix and match. Be straight with me, Titus. Eh. Hmm. Maybe she isn't who you thought she was. Nah, I know her. He looks upstairs, distracted. She's just a girl in over her head. She's not some helpless girl. She handled the mercenary well enough. Handled him? He bucks. She got into some stupid shit with that guy. Shit we had to take care of. Yes, yes, we all heard about it. And the fact still stands. You were more disturbed by the tape than her. Be straight with me, Titus. What really happened? I already told you. He puts his giant face in his hands and sighs. We fucking hanged him. There's less gusto in his voice now. His men, too, are growing increasingly silent. They're confused. This is growing over their heads. Come on, Titus. We know you didn't hang him. He was shot. He taps on his notebook. I know you're tired. So am I. Why don't you just... You know what? He gets closer. I am tired. I'm tired of you and the whore upstairs. Next time you see her, tell her Titus said fuck off. He throws his beer to he, th he throws his beer can down. That lying scam. We're done. This is over. You understand? Your little investigation is over. Yeah. There's silence in the room. Elaine start, starts saying something, then thinks best not to. On the floor, beer drips out of the can into a small puddle. No one does anything about it. What is this quiet funeral shit? What well, we need is some beers in us. He looks around. Bartender, 20 beers for the dock workers union. Why don't we make it 40, huh? The man shouts from behind the counter. Why don't we make it a hundred beers? You're not loud enough. A hundred beers. Now we're talking. Glenn livens up. Hoppity hop over here, cafeteria manager. Whoa. Her her heroic rhetoric time convinced Titus that he's being manipulated. Plus one for mention the surreal play. Strange reaction to the bullet. Compromised skill set known. Angus can't take pressure. Disgust, 8th Hardy. God damn, I have stacked this shit up. And it's a white check, so I could just go for it. And it was easy. Convince Titus he's being manipulated? You should know by now, Titus Hardy will never falter. But you know someone who might. One of his boys will. 
Bad Angus. The powerful guy, Mr. Ol Muscle. That time, the time has come to put him in the pressure cooker. Just remember it's about more than cliché. It's about these men and Martinez, their district, their responsibility. Outside in the evening light, ruined and old, shadows lengthen in the pavement, a distant gunshot. That's it then. Case closed. We're going home, Kim. Huh? Lieutenant raises his brow. He'll get it. Go on. Write it down, Kim. In Martinez, they just kill you because they don't like you. Got it. He takes out his notebook. Kill you because they don't like you. All because... Hmm. Yeah. Their district and their responsibility. Hmm. They'll kill you because you work for the wrong people. Goddamn right, this is Union Town. You work for the company, we will kill you. Fuck, Dennis, we don't kill you if you work for the company. Half the harbor works for the company. Working for the wrong company. He jots down. And they execute you. They just hang you, shoot you, whatever. They can't even remember. It wasn't that. It wasn't... The fat man says with a wheeze, We didn't shoot him. That's it. That's the weak one. You flushed him out. Now go in for the... Officer, you will be next if you don't shut up. The old man reaches for his belt, but his voice is strangely calm. He is straight up threatening me. Firearm. A Glace 08. Or a 38 caliber pistol. Either was small enough for you to have missed. He's on to you. He knows what you're trying to do. So do I go after Theo or Angus? Shit. Do I avoid the distraction and go in for the kill? Or do I play defense on this mess? <clears throat> Turn to Angus. Or what? You're gonna kill me like you killed him for no fucking reason? We didn't kill him. We didn't even hang him. He was dead when he... He takes a breath, wheezing. Shut up, Angus. He was dead before you hanged him. Fatty. Little guy hits Angus in the back of his head. A loud slap. Say one more thing to the cops and I'll... Dennis! Titus roars. Stand down or I'll beat your head in. Theo! He points to the old man. Take your hand off your belt. This isn't 31. I've got this under control. Does he? His closed fist is shaking. It's you who's in control. Let them have their moment. The room falls quiet. So quiet you can hear Angus wheeze. Angie, where's your goddamn inhaler? You sound like you're dying. I left it at home. I couldn't get it. I'm too fuck. He grabbed his chest. I'm sorry. Why are you so fucking fat, Angus? Jesus Christ. Lizzie snaps at him. Now it's all pointless because of you. You wasted my time. I told you, Titus. He turns to him. I told you, just give her up. Lizzie? He turns He turns to the fixer. Your help is no longer needed here. Go tell Evrout. Fine, I'll tell him. After a long walk along the coast, she walks off without looking back. You're in. He's all yours. Questions?
So you didn't kill him. Oh, that, oh now I'm gonna go. I'm gonna whisper to Kim. Kim, we did it. Lieutenant gives a, sm a smile. Only the, the lieutenant gives a smile. Only you can see. Yeah. <laughs> So you didn't kill him. He was already dead. He nods. You hang the corpse to cover up the real cause of death. The bullet in his head. Another nod. Why? Because the girls asked us to. They were in some shit. Girls? Plural? There's another girl. Two of them. Take note of this. They'll probably say more about her later. Did she kill him? Cop, I have no idea. The girl says she didn't. What happened Sunday night? Clasher came down. He points the stairs. She seemed really out of it. Drugged up. Even more than usual. Bug-eyed and gurning. You know, not in a fun way. It looked like she'd re-dosed after something went down. I've seen that look before. She was scared. I knew someone had died. How did you know? I've done this job for ten years. I've seen it before. It's the politician in the motel room with the dead hooker scenario, only in reverse. Good analogy, boss. The rat-faced man snickers. You don't get to talk yet, Shanky. He points at him. You're still on the bench, and you keep talking it- And you keep taking it easy too, Angus. He turns back to you. What happened then? We were upstairs. Sure, any day the Merc was dead. A sure as day the Merc was dead. And there was a fuck. There was a bullet hole through the window. Fucking. He scratches his chin. Dirty sheets and bottles everywhere. He means they'd been fucking. I think the... Uh, I think the bullet hole... I think the bullet might have gone through the window, which is why the window's been replaced. And I think that the reason why the, the, the cleaning lady hasn't been around all week is because she knows about the murder. And that's why she's pieced out. That's why she hasn't been back all week. I'm gonna have to talk to her again. Tavis patched the window, and the corpse, we hanged. Who's Tibbs, the authority? Nah, he's my brother. He's in the window replacement business. Tibbs, that's short for... Tiberius? Yeah, he nods. Good man. Woo! I'm getting so many weird pieces of experience right now. Like, weird amounts of spam experience. Jesus. Oh, because I learned who fixed the window. Wait, no, that wasn't even a quest, though. That was a different window. So much happening right now. If Clash A didn't kill him, why the cover-up? This is a weird one, by the way. This option showed up at the beginning of the conversation, but there had never been a previous instance of indication that she ever killed him until I st until the, did this dialogue option. That's when this came up. So this probably shouldn't have shown up until I was done with this, probably. <coughs> If Clashe didn't kill him, why the cover-up? You may have noticed our girls in some shit on our own. I didn't notice anything. What kind of shit are we talking about? The can't show up on the police radar kind. There are people after her, from the old, old world where she came from. If she can't show up on the police radar, why'd she call the police? These people, who are they? They're powerful. He looks out the window. Connected to the moral intern. She's clearly afraid for her life. Says if she showed up in your system, she'd be ghosted away. That's all he knows. That's all she's told him. And why would you help someone like that? By taking on a murder? Why would I? He shrugs. I guess we abide all sorts of runaways and losers here. It's a Martinez thing. So who killed the Merc then? Any leads? Not yet. 
Just some ideas. She says a shot came from outside. Behind the window somewhere. So that's a clue. What are you thinking? I'm thinking. Someone's past caught up with them. Either hers or his. Well then why are you guys covering up for this in the first place? Hers. You mean... I mean the people after Clash, eh? Maybe the shot missed. Maybe it was meant for her. I like that. The young guy nods. Been thinking the same thing myself. And you had ideas about his past too? I do. One of those mercenary buddies of his could have done it. They got guns, training, years of bad blood, probably. Or it could have been someone else from Krenel. He pauses to think. Tell you what I'd do. Check out the coast for vantage points. Maybe consult with a ballistics buddy of mine. That's what I'd do. If I wasn't too busy doing this clown dance with you. He's calm now. Threw all that turmoil away. Became himself again. Whose idea was it to hang him anyway? Hers? In a manner of speaking. Remember the two girls? He may be talking about the other one. Earlier you said there was that. Earlier you said the girls asked for help. Who was the other one, girl? That's right. He blinks. It was her idea to hang him. I liked it for political reasons. It sent a good message. <clears throat> it's her, isn't it? The missing eighth hardy. That's the other girl. The big guy turns to Glenn, who's about to say something. The blonde shuts his mouth before the word escapes. How the fuck do you? Watch, how are you so good at tracking people? I'll say it again. Titus turns to you. All the Hardy Boys are right here, cop. The woman, that woman is just affiliated with the Hardy Boys. You don't know her anyway. You know, it's okay for there to be a Hardy girl, Titus. His face sets like concrete. He shakes his head solemnly. We're hardy boys, and that's it. Sure, but can you tell me anything about this affiliate? Name, current location? Nope. You're not getting to her. It's Clash you want to talk to. I'm sorry I made you guys fight. Me too. Thank you for this, Titus. I'll go talk to her. For the last time. You'd do that. He grabs his beer and swirls it in his hand. Then thinks of something. Hey cop, before you go. Suddenly the wind picks up outside. You hear it rattling the loud, the large windows in their frames. It carries newspapers. Circles the whirling in rags in a warm column. She... He looks up. Last I came to Martinez to hide. Many of us did. This is where you wash up when there's nowhere else left to go. The Union takes you in. Now, she refused that protection, but... But you would still prefer if we didn't take her away. That's right. If we didn't take care of the people who end up here, this place would just be a couple of ruins and some cargo containers. We'll take that into account. The Lieutenant slides his notebook into his coat pocket. He turns to leave. The fuck? Not 100% sure to, what to make of what just happened. Hmm. Still more confrontations to be had. So many of them. Which thing got finished? I don't know. Look how, look how long this list is getting. Look how busy I've been. This is... I can't scroll. It's small enough to not scroll. Hmm. Hmm. He became weirdly forthcoming, and then, like, helpful. Hmm. It raises some questions about his loyalties, and why he would just give up? Maybe changes the context of the stakes a little bit. I don't know. We'll see.